Now we go on to our next presentation. Uh, this is by Dinara Gagarina. She is a participant of the European Summer University. She comes from Perm State University in the Russian Federation. And her talk is on system of history-oriented information systems. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. My name is Dinara Gagarina and I'm from Perm State University. It's a big pleasure for me uh, to make a presentation on the summer university. Um, uh, our university is, uh, I will say some words about uh, our center and about our university. Our university is one of the most important centers in Russia on historical information science. Uh, we work on this field uh, for more than 15 years and uh, we work in the laboratory of historical and political information science. This year, uh, we established a center for digital humanities and we want to wide our search, not only in the sphere of history, but also in other fields of humanities and social sciences. Uh, our center and our laboratory uh, for um, 15 years uh, have implemented a series of projects connected with creation of history-oriented information systems. Uh, these systems uh, were based on different historical sources and, uh, with, and were connected with different uh, historical themes. And the project uh, which I want to tell you uh, now, uh, which name is on the slide, uh, is uh, generalized our 15 years experience uh, in the sphere of historical information science uh, systems and databases and deals with systems as a concept, developed this classification, general, generalized methods and algorithms of uh, their cre creation, evaluation and scientific use. One of the component of this project is a website, is digitalhistory.ru uh, and uh, this website is um, a catalog of history-oriented information system. But uh, the first question is, uh, what is history-oriented information system is? And uh, I will begin with some examples. Uh, there are three mm, not very big hours in projects. Uh, the first example uh, called uh, the First World War in Perm Regional Periodicals. I have to say that our laboratory, uh, in cooperation with uh, our regional museum, works, uh, implemented a series of projects connected with periodicals, and this is one of uh, such projects. Uh, it's not very big. We have a collection of newspapers. It's 10 newspapers and about uh, 2,500 2, issues. And um, for each issue, uh, we have, you can see it in this part, we have a list of uh, articles, a list of publications from this issue which are connected with the First World War. For each article, we have a rather detailed um, description. It's uh, Typical uh, attributes such as the title of the article, uh, also uh, geographical places which are mentioned in the article, personalities who are mentioned, keywords, and so on. And uh, we also has uh, OCR PDF. It's uh, OCR, OCR recognized, and you can use uh, uh, search tools. Uh, and we also have text in HTML format uh, for every article. The second example of history-oriented information system is uh, ethnic units of Russian army, and here we have um, it's bilingual <laughs> presentation. All my, uh, most of our uh, systems uh, have only Russian interface, I'm sorry. And here we have a list of ethnic units, and for each unit, uh, we have a very detailed description, and we also have um, description in natural language, and also we have a list 
there's only one, but for some uh, units we have a list of publications uh, which are in which uh, this ethnic unit is mentioned, and uh, a list, uh, again, there is only one, uh, but usually we have a list of personalities who is connected with uh, this unit, and uh, a list of maps which are uploaded to our system and which are also connected with this unit. And the third uh, very short example, it's uh, parliamentary history of the pre-revolutionary Russia, I have to say that uh, history faculty of our university is one of the most important centers of Russian parliamentary history, not only Russian. Uh, and uh, here we see a list of entities, we have personalities, have information about every member of uh, pre-revolutionary state Duma and every member of state council. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, events, uh, sources, organizations, uh, publications, and so on. Uh, this uh, information system has uh, some research tools. This is one of the examples. And uh, uh, this tool is for uh, prosopographical research and for, uh, for research about uh, members of State Duma and State Council of pre revolutionary Russia. So, uh, what is history-oriented information system? Very simple definition. It's a special class of systems developed for store, organize, and provide access to historical information, and as, uh, as well as for its analytical processing in accordance with the needs of historical research or education. Uh, histor historical information systems uh, are developed uh, in a very close uh, uh, connection with historical databases uh, because in most uh, cases uh, relational and non-relational databases are the technical base of the historical uh, information system. In late uh, 90s, Manfred Thaler uh, supposed, suggested um, the classification for historical databases. It's source-oriented, problem-oriented, and uh, method-oriented. The first two is uh, the most important and uh, most wide used. And uh, this classification is also good for historical information system. And as for my uh, previous examples, uh, this system is mostly source-oriented. Uh, what does it mean? It means that on um, the structure of the source, the structure of the newspapers, are uh, put it uh, on the model, on the information model of this system. Uh, this one is uh, problem oriented. We don't see here uh, sources itself. We don't see here the texts. Uh, we saw here something like extract from the sources. Uh, only such information or what we need. Uh, this one is a mix of, the whole, of, all of all approaches, and for some parts of this system we use source-oriented approach, and for some parts uh, method-oriented approach, and for some parts uh, problem-oriented approach. Uh, so, uh, going to the project, uh, the main project, about what I want to say. Uh, what is it about? Uh, <clears throat> DigitalHistory.ru includes electronic catalog of history-oriented information systems. There are about um, 800 uh, resources uh, and uh, also 500 publications on the theme. Uh, there are both uh, Russian and foreign resources and uh, Russian and foreign publications, but most publications are in Russian. Uh, we, the catalog includes uh, uh, both foreign and foreign, uh, both Russian and foreign systems, as I say, and both present day systems and old databases from late 80s uh, and uh, 90s. Uh, publications, um, uh, sorry, for every, for every system, we have, of course, a description. It's about, uh, it's more than 25 different attributes. 
Uh, so here you see not full list of them, and there is an example. Uh, there are different uh, attributes connected with um, <coughs> Uh, from the one side, there are standard attributes, from the other side, there are attributes which are more important for historians and for historical use and for historical education, for example. Uh, one of the important attributes here is, it's, uh, here, uh, it's uh, publications in which uh, this system is mentioned. It's very important for such systems uh, which are not um, accessible through the internet, which are not exist now, and especially for, public, for, for systems from 80s and 90s, uh, from um, databases and systems from uh, this period. Uh, similarly for publications, index cards for publications, and again an example, and again a list of um, information systems which are mentioned in these publications. Uh, when we analyze uh, publications in the system, we, saw, we see that most of them are connected with concrete systems and only a few of them are connected with uh, the system of the, uh, in the whole. Of course, we have some search tools uh, here, uh, screenshots uh, for searching uh, by systems. Uh, it's uh, different attribute, geography, chronology, uh, sphere of history, uh, type of system, type of sources which we use. Full, uh, if the system have text sources, are they full text or not? Uh, maybe by only pictures. Uh, uh, then approach and some others. Uh, we also we can put a year which we interested in and um, or search by name, uh, by title, and we. Um, get a list of information systems uh, which uh, include information uh, with our conditions. So it's, uh, import uh, it's a very useful instrument uh, for researchers uh, who are looking for information and sources on the theme. Uh, and we also use this uh, information system in education, our history faculty, uh, and it works. Search <laughs> uh, tools also for publications. Uh, here an example with publications of Manfred Thaler. Uh, we have the publications from 80s and uh, modern publications. Uh, so that I think uh, the all things what I want to say. Uh, there's some possibilities, they're rather usual, and uh, once again about our Center for Digital Humanities website. Uh, we are rather young center, so our site is also rather, <laughs> rather, young, <laughs> rather young, but uh, we have, you can find a list of, public, a list of projects which we, which we have implemented last years and list of publications and other information. Thank you for your attention.